Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial with L Roaring Records and Logic Pro X. Today I want to take an opportunity to talk about the piano roll in Logic and the, the function that it plays and how you can be a music creator in Logic even if you aren't a piano player or very comfortable using a MIDI controller of some kind. So um, let's just let's just dive right in um i'm going to start off this conversation with a drum kit instead of the classic electric piano so i'm going to come down here to the bottom and uh hit the back folder button come into drum kit and i really like socal for the basic drum kit and then you can open your piano roll with the editor screen down here and when you open the piano roll, I'm going to make it as big as possible so you can see as much of it as you can right now. You'll notice uh, several cool features. One, there's a piano going on to the side here. Um, that's important because it correlates to what notes you would be pressing on your actual piano. And then this grid here is extremely important. So this is how music is notated in MIDI. It's a basically a graphical representation of what the note would actually be doing here in the software. So if you want to play a kick drum, then that would be everything that goes across uh, this row right here. And then as it goes up, you can see the alternate light piano keys, light, dark, light, dark, light, light dark light dark light dark light light and that corresponds to each of the piano keys it also tells you when you have a drum set up what uh, specific sound has been assigned to that so if i want a hand clap i can be up here or a snare rim shot so that's going across now as we think about them aligned vertically this is our rhythmic aspects so let's go ahead and actually write a note into this and I'm not going to perform it I don't have a MIDI controller set up to this but what I can do is use my pencil tool and there are two ways to access my pencil tool when I am in this mode right here one of them you'll notice that if you have all your advanced preferences on you actually have two different controls right here and when you have those different controls, this is your standard click, which is the pointer. So I can draw boxes and select things. And this is the pencil tool. So if I want to switch to the pencil tool, you'll notice as I hover over it, it says command click tool. So if I hold command on my typing keyboard, now I've switched from a pointer tool to a pencil tool and I can now click and add a note. I've added a kick drum note right at the beginning of measure one, and it takes up two grid markers here. So I've successfully added a note. Now, if you're going to be adding a lot of notes and you don't want to hold um, the command key down, then by all means, come up here and switch permanently to the pencil tool. So you can write all sorts of different notes in as you want to by just left clicking. I'm not holding command anymore. It's permanently on the actual uh, pencil tool. Um, if you want to adjust the length of a note, say now we add on to this instead of being one grid unit, uh, it's now two of our grid units. Um, I've made that longer, so that is the duration of an entire eighth note because it's two uh, grid units. If you don't understand quarter notes and eighth notes exactly, that's okay. But four grid units is um, a quarter note. So if I wanted to make this instead of an eighth note, a quarter note, I could double click on this note to get rid of it and then extend this out. And what are quarter notes? Quarter notes are the steady pulse. So I'm just going to make four quarter notes here in this measure. A little bit long. And you notice whatever the length of the last note was when I click a new note, that's the, the value. And then you can adjust the length of that note using the right side of the note. But the left edge of the note is where the actual rhythmic event happens. So quarter notes are going to be our steady pulse. I'm going to click and drag 
to create a cycle region. Now this will just loop this information. So I'm actually going to play what I've written right here. That's the steady pulse that logic is currently thinking in. If I want that to go slower, I can click my tempo marker right here and drag down and change the speed. So logic is reading this grid from left to right. And as soon as the playhead, which is this little triangle moving at the top, as soon as it reaches the left edge of a note, that's when it initiates that particular sound. Now, I could also draw much smaller notes in. And as long as the left edge of them is still four grid units away, so there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, it's still going to sound like quarter notes. Now, when I'm writing a rhythm like this in Logic using the pencil tool, I like to have my repeating tool at one measure in length first so I can really begin to make some different sounds. I'm going to shorten these back up for now so that I can be a little more creative with what I'm doing. Back to single hits. I'm going to add a note in here. I'm going to slide this up. Add a note there. Now let's begin to see what that sounds like. Yeah, this note's kind of nerdy. Let's move it over. Now, let's suppose that I want to change the intensity of some of the notes. So if I click on one of them, I can actually adjust its velocity over here. Red meaning I hit the key harder, purple meaning I hit the key softer. So I'm going to add a little emphasis to a couple notes to give them a little more punch and solidify the feel of this beat. Here we go. Then you can continue on perfecting exactly what you wanted to say. Uh, we could also go in and add some hi-hats. Notice it automatically adjusted the zoom, so now I have two measures worth of information that I can do here. So here's my new rhythm. Remember, double clicking removes, single clicking, and I can slide. Then I can keep going, of course. Now if I want to hear what happens over here, I need to expand my cycle region to include both measures. So there you can see I've actually added in 
uh, piano roll notes. So I've got a nice little uh, drum groove going on here. And if I want to make it longer, I like my two measures, but I want more of it, then I can click and drag the upper right hand corner of the MIDI region in the actual track window up here and extend it out. We'll say we make eight measures. So now I can hear that one sound loop four times across. Now I'm going to make another uh, instrument up here and we're just going to go for the That instrument needs to be a software instrument. We're now going to use the default classic electric piano. So now this is going to function like a piano. So I can write in the notes that I want on the actual piano. The lower you go by scrolling, the lower the piano notes, the higher you go. The higher the notes so it works very much like you would expect again i've got my pencil tool selected so i can actually draw in the the notes um we can make smaller loops to begin with so that we can hear more uh things but i'm just going to have it play and i'm going to write some notes in and then if i don't like it I'm just going to click it and adjust it till i do Now, one thing you begin to notice is like these three notes right here, I'm switching back to my pointer tool now so I don't accidentally write a bunch of stuff. These three notes right here don't come out very clearly because they actually touch each other. So I'm gonna draw a box around them and I'm gonna shorten them so they each get a little bit of space. Now you'll hear three distinctly different notes. Again, you can add space. It's the left edge of each block that determines the rhythmic event that happens. The right edge that determines how long the note's gonna hold. So if you want one that bounces a melody, that bounces a little bit more, then shorten these notes so they get a little more crisp uh, feel to them. So let's, let's see how this is different. And then again, like before, I could choose to loop this out and make uh, a track out of it. Now I have four repetitions of the same thing in both the rhythm track and the melody track. So really getting in there and experimenting um, with this type of stuff, it makes a big difference. And none of this was played in on the MIDI keyboard, but it begins to sound nice and take the shape that you would expect a musical line to take. So I hope this has been helpful. Again, this is the piano roll. Everything is now quantized because I've written it into the actual grid. So I don't really have to worry about quantizing over here as much as I would normally do. And you can adjust the velocities on the fly as well. I hope this has helped. See you later.